What's good, y'all? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be reacting to Dale Earnhardt the Day, part one of five. We're going to do the whole series this week and finish that off. You guys have been wanting me to react to this for a while now, and I'm finally getting to it. I'm feeling amazing. You guys have been killing the videos. I appreciate y'all. Welcome all the new subscribers. We so close to 2K. So close. Hit that subscribe button. If y'all do anything on this video, subscribe and like. It's free. It's free to subscribe. It's free to like. I appreciate all the new people here. I hope y'all enjoy the reaction. Original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. I don't think, uh, I don't think I can make the resolution better. The rising sun oh, yeah, shall no. surely set on days of triumph and tragedy alike. The 2001 NASCAR season dawned like every other, under the Florida sun, where the sport's biggest race of the year was also its first, the Daytona 500. Man, I know people were extremely hyped for this. Was NASCAR's seat of power? One man sat at the head of the table, Dale Earnhardt. Take him to Daytona and let him go on those big banks. He was just magical. The stuff he would do. Dale had a knack for Daytona that nobody else had. The way he could maneuver, he knew what he wanted to do with a race car. He knew where he could put it. People just say he could see the air. He looks so and laid back. You that. Like he, he just said, knows what he's doing. It, but I can hear it and I can feel it. Um, he had an open face helmet for that reason. To run Daytona and run Daytona really well, you have to have no fear. You just have to be willing to keep your foot in the gas and you really got to manhandle that car. That's when Dale was at his best. Earnhardt, Daytona. They didn't look like Two anybody was even close to Dale. To tell a Shakespearean tragedy of sport. And that last Earnhardt little clip. Every race there was to win at Daytona, but not the 500. Never the 500. 20 years under an unjust sun. He was frustrated that his career would be measured by it, by some somehow there'd be an asterisk next to his career that he never won the Daytona 500, no matter how many championships or how many races he won. At long last, Dale's day in the sun arrived. Man, that's got to be like an amazing feeling. Like that's all this man has wanted and he finally got it. Think about moments. I can tell I this shit is emotional. People lining up down the pit lane. Uh, everybody knew what it meant to him, and they they honored him that day. Everyone knew that it took 20 years of hell. So when he did triumph, uh, it was a weight lifted. It was like there was a 12-year-old kid there. You know, that's what he Man. sounded like. He was just so he happy looks so, and so happy and able to just celebrate this great event that he had been talked about not winning for so long. It, it was a big deal. That trophy right there, my name's on it now. They can't take it off. My car's going in Daytona, USA. I don't care. I love it. I want it to be there. I took me a little spin in the grass so I get the good out of it. You could see it in his Yo. face. You could see it in his demeanor. This and happiness makes me happy. That everyone said it was supposed to mean. From that moment on, he was right with the world, it seemed. I love seeing people succeed. In 2001, when we were sitting, doing an interview, I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. How do you feel about Dale Earnhardt? A lot better, I've known a lot better so today than I did uh, several years ago uh, because of family, because of my life, uh, because I think I'm a, a better person than I used to be. I got it all right now, Daryl. I got it all. No, you really do. I'm, really, right. I'm, I'm, I'm a lucky man. I have it all. Crossing that line first, first and then spin and around then the infield. Spin around the infield. And then go to victory lane. Then go to victory lane, which is where I'll be do the interviews. Are you gonna be here? Yeah. What do you mean I'll be here? <laughs> Fox brought their A team in here, babe. <laughs> 
man, that track looks huge. 2001 was the start of a new era in NASCAR. For new broadcast partner Fox Sports, Dale Earnhardt was the key to success. Just as Dale's key to success was Richard Childress, his car owner and closest friend. We had a whole lot in common. We raced our way up, we worked our way up to what we got. Nothing was ever given to either one of us. We had a bond and a trust in each other that I think that most men do not have. After several injury-plagued seasons, Dale was finally healthy and a favorite to win his record eighth season title. What people don't remember is uh, Dale raced for about a year with a broken neck. He oh, wow. had crashed at Atlanta early in the season, and it cracked a vertebrae in his neck. And because they said the surgery was risky, he didn't want to do it. His right hand would go to He's sleep in the car. And I guess that was from pinching nerves, but he would drive with one hand and leave the other one over there on the bar. What people didn't know is when he, after he finished the race, we'd basically have to help him take his uniform off. I mean, he would unzip it, but we'd have to pull it off of his shoulders. That's and dedication get it down to that point. at its finest, right there. He did there, not get man. that surgery done he until wanted the season to was win. over. He and wanted to be the best when they at the sport. Him up, there was a uh, sliver of bone that had you, been you, all you could do is respect that was wedged it. into his nerves. So he dealt with that for eight months. He told me once uh, Dr. Branch fixed his neck, he said, I'm a new man. In 2000, we came back. I think we finished second. The points only lost it by a few. And all we could talk about that winter between 2000 and 2001, I felt that we were as prepared to win the championship in 2001 as any year that we had ever been. That Dale Earnhardt Jr. was ready to challenge Dale Sr. for the title was all according to plan. His Wait, his son, son challenged him for the Earnhardt title? Incorporated, the team his father had built with a focus on the future. I don't think he did that That's just a legacy right there. he wanted to build something for Dale Earnhardt Jr. But I do think his belief in Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s talent had a lot to do with it. He's that 209 laps, and the Intimidator's son is the dominator today. I ain't seen you in a while. Hey, Superman. <laughs> yeah. Good job, man. Yeah. And I remember Dale coming to me, and he said, I'm the envy of all the dads in the garage. And he just thought that was the coolest thing. And Dale Jr. won his first cup race in Texas. And part of my responsibilities was being in charge of Victory Lane. So, of course, I'm very excited. I have the Budweiser towel and the hat, and I'm ready to run up to the car. And this giant hand grabs me and essentially throws me to the ground. <laughs> so on national television, there's this red blur and Big E going right past and, and getting in the car. Of course, that was cool. And now here's the big man himself, Dale Sr. The picture of him squeezing his neck at the all-star race is a dear picture to me because he just really loved the fact that his boy could do the same things that he could do on the racetrack. Right, like you gotta be a proud ass dad. That's it. I'm pissed. Look, 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 okay. So here's the plan, y'all. I know y'all are gonna hate me for breaking this up into all five parts. But I have to do it to y'all. Y'all y'all just gonna have to wait to see my reaction to the rest of it. I'm invested in this shit already. This first part really got me emotionally invested to see what else this documentary has to say about Dale Earnhardt. So I hope y'all enjoyed the first part of this reaction. Part two will be out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next video. I love y'all. Peace. They wanna fall away. Like when I was down bad, I was stuck in the mud. Now nigga didn't clean up Louis V on the so so.